To graph the polar equation in the form r equals a sine theta or r equals a cosine theta, you're going to get a circle. For a sine theta, your circle will land along the y-axis. For a cosine theta, your circle will land along the x-axis. So if I were to draw a generic circle for a sine theta, if a were positive, then my circle would long, uh, lie along the y-axis where a is how far the diameter goes. For cosine, again, because it goes along the x-axis, my circle, for example, would be over here where that would be my value a. So a is going to be your diameter, and again, sine versus cosine indicates which axis it falls along. If A were to be negative, this circle would fall below the x-axis. If A were negative, this circle would be on the left side of the y-axis. So let's look at the graph R equals 4 sine theta. So because it's R equals 4 sine theta, again we know that sine graphs go along the y-axis because 4 is positive. The graph will be above the x-axis. Oops, that's going to be there. This is going to be up a height of 4. And the center is going to fall right here at 0, 2. If 4 were negative, again, this would be below the x-axis. So we can verify this by looking at this equation. Um, it's a polar equation. We can change it to rectangular form and check to verify that it does indeed represent that circle. So if I multiply both sides by r, this becomes r squared. I'm going to rewrite this right side as 4 times r sine of theta. Using our equations, we can substitute r squared in with x squared plus y squared. Over here, r sine theta can be substituted with y. And next, I'm actually going to complete the square on this. I'm going to bring this 4y over, leaving, leaving 0 on the right side. And when we complete the square on the y's, we're going to take b and divide by 2 and square it. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Squared would be 4. So we're going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. And then finally rewrite this as x squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared equals 4. And so now you have an equation in rectangular form that represents a circle with center 0, 2. And then your radius is the square root of that, which is 2. And so, again, in your polar form, you graphed the same thing, which is nice that it's consistent. So again, you have your circle with center 0, 2. And if that's 2, then your radius is a length of 2 in every direction. For this equation, I have r equals negative 6 cosine of theta. Um, in this case, my a equals negative 6. Since it's a cosine for this equation, um, my graph is going to be along the x-axis. It is still in the form of a cosine theta, so I know it's going to be a circle. Since a is negative 6, I know I'm going to fall on the left side of the y-axis. So I'm actually going to go out 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's going to represent the diameter of this circle. And then try to make yours look more circle-like. <laughs> Your center is falling at 1, 2, 3, out. So again, when you have cosine, you're along the x-axis, and a indicates the length of your diameter, the negative indicating that you're on the um, left side of that y-axis. Next, we're going to talk about tests for symmetry. Um, we have three different things we're going to check. Symmetry with respect to, they call it the polar axis. which also is the same as x-axis. To check if an equation has polar axis symmetry, 
what you're going to do is replace theta with negative theta. When you do so, you're going to check the resulting equation to see if it's the same as the original equation. If it is the same as the original equation, then you do have polar axis symmetry. If it's not the same as the original equation, then it may or may not have polar axis symmetry. Next, we're going to talk about symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2, which is the same as the y-axis. In order to check for this, you're going to replace r theta with negative r negative theta. And the same um, thing holds true. If the resulting equation is the same as the original equation, then you do have y-axis or theta equals pi over 2 axis symmetry. And if it is not the same, and it, again, it has to be exactly the same, so if it's not the same, then it may or may not have theta equals pi over 2 symmetry. The very last um, test for symmetry would be if it is symmetric to the pull which is the same as the origin. To check for this, you are going to replace r with negative r. And the same rules apply. Let's look at an example. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to look right here, sine of negative theta. Um, we know that sine of negative theta is the same as negative sine of theta. And so a negative times a negative becomes a positive, so r equals 4 sine theta. Since that is not exactly the same as the original equation, then we would say it may or may not have polar axis symmetry. Again, polar axis is the same as the x-axis. So I'm just going to write maybe. The next thing we're going to check for is if it has symmetry with respect to theta equals pi over 2. And to do so, you're going to replace r with negative r and theta with negative theta. So wherever I see an r in the original equation, I'm going to replace it with a negative r. And again, where I see theta, I'm going to replace it with negative theta. So this stays as negative r. We already said, like in the first problem, sine of negative theta is the same as negative sine theta. So this side of the equation is similar to the original problem. And if I divide both sides by a negative, I get that r equals negative 4 sine of theta. So since this is exactly like the original equation, then we can say that yes, it will have theta equals pi over 2 symmetry. Again, it will have symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2, which is the same as the y-axis. So yes, it will have, if you want to think of it as y-axis symmetry. The last one I want to check for is if it is symmetric with respect to the pole, which is the same as the origin. To do so, you're going to replace r with negative r. And leave everything else the same in the equation. When I have this, that's the same as negative r. If I divide out a negative 1, I have the equation r equals 4 sine theta. Because that is not exactly like the original equation, we would again say that it may or may not have pull, um, or excuse me, symmetry with respect to the pull, which is the same as the origin. I just want to kind of double check, not double check, but reinforce, if you graph this circle, sine means the circle will be along the y-axis. Because the a value is negative, I know it will be below the x-axis. It's going out 4. 
And if you look at this graph, it definitely has symmetry across the y-axis, again reinforcing the work we just showed that yes, it did have um, theta equals pi over 2 axis symmetry, which again, that was the y-axis.